The case that happened in Miami, Florida in 2008 caused a great shock in the community, especially among those who knew Tiffany Carter, a young and beautiful nurse. Tiffany, with her charm and dedication to her work, quickly won the hearts of many people. Her life suddenly changed when she met Omar Lewis, a wealthy 50-year-old man. Despite the large age difference, the relationship developed rapidly, leading to a marriage that many considered fateful. However, just a few days after the lavish wedding, the community was shocked to hear that Tiffany had suddenly passed away. Her death not only made people mourn, but also raised many questions about the real cause behind this tragedy. Tiffany Carter, 20 years old, is a perfect example of perseverance and relentless effort. Born and raised in a middle-class family, she soon realized the value of studying and working hard. Since childhood, she had always been a good child, diligent in studying and willing to help those around her. This personality not only made Tiffany loved by everyone, but also became the motivation for her to strive to excel in life. From the early years of high school, Tiffany had shown excellent academic achievements. She was always among the top students in school, and no matter what subject she studied, she always tried her best. However, what made her stand out was not only her high grades, but also her care and concern for her friends and teachers. Tiffany was not only good at studying, but also very active in extracurricular activities. She participated in many clubs, charities, and community projects, where she used her time and energy to help those in need. As an adult, Tiffany not only stood out for her academic talent, but also for her attractive appearance. She had bright eyes, a gentle smile, and a natural beauty that moved people's hearts. However, what truly made Tiffany attractive was not just her appearance, but also her gentleness, kindness, and warm personality. Anyone who had ever come into contact with Tiffany could feel her sincerity and affection. These characteristics made Tiffany an ideal model in the eyes of many people, and she received much admiration from her friends, colleagues, and even those who had just met her. When Tiffany chose to pursue nursing, the decision was not random. From a young age, she had developed a passion for caring for and helping others. She felt happiest when she saw the smiles on the faces of those she helped, and this shaped the career path Tiffany would pursue. With all her hard work and dedication, Tiffany successfully completed her nursing school program and became a promising young nurse. At work, Tiffany was not only a talented nurse, but also a great colleague. She was always ready to help her colleagues when needed, and her dedication to patient care was admired by everyone. Every time Tiffany entered a hospital room, she not only brought medical care, but also hope and comfort to the patients. For Tiffany, being a nurse was not just a job, but her life's mission. However, inside, Tiffany still had a deep desire for a stable life and a happy family. For her, building a warm family where she could give love and care to her husband and children was the biggest goal of her life. Although there were many suitors, Tiffany was always looking for a mature man who could provide her with the stability and love she desired. Tiffany Carter was the embodiment of beauty both in appearance and soul. An ideal woman with simple but meaningful dreams. On the contrary, Omar Lewis, 50 years old, was raised in a family with a solid educational foundation since childhood. Born into a middle-class family in Miami, Florida, Omar received a good education from an early age. His parents were highly educated and always focused on educating their children. They encouraged Omar to develop independent thinking and knowledge, which helped him become an intelligent, bright, and sharp-minded person. From his early years, Omar showed a keen sense of business. After graduating from university with a business degree, he began his career in finance. With his natural talent and quick judgment, Omar quickly rose through the ranks. He began investing in real estate, stocks, and other areas, gradually building a solid foundation for himself. By the age of 30, Omar had become a self-made millionaire, and by the age of 40, he had amassed a huge fortune and gained a reputation in the business world. Omar was known not only for his financial success, but also for his great influence in society. 
He regularly appeared at charity events and lavish parties and was one of the prominent faces in Miami's elite circles. People admired Omar's intelligence, leadership, and foresight. He was a symbol of success and a role model for many in the business world. However, behind his successful appearance and confident demeanor, Omar always had psychological insecurity and anxiety. The wealth and fame he achieved were not enough to dispel his deep worries. Omar always felt the pressure of maintaining his position in society, afraid that a small mistake could cause everything he built to collapse. The perfection he pursued became a burden, causing him to live in a constant state of stress. Omar also carries a deep loneliness that he finds difficult to share with others. Despite having everything, wealth, fame, and power, he still feels that he lacks something that money cannot buy, peace of mind. For years, Omar has tried to hide these worries by burying himself in work and social relationships, but the feeling of emptiness always haunts him. Omar Lewis and Tiffany Carter first met on a beautiful afternoon on Miami Beach, a chance encounter, but a meaningful one. Although Omar was in his 50s with a dignified and calm appearance, and Tiffany was only 20, full of vitality and youthfulness, the age difference did not seem to prevent them from moving towards a relationship. Uh, they started with simple conversations, sharing everyday stories, and gradually formed a close friendship. Initially, neither of them intended to go further. Omar, with many years of life experience, was used to controlling his emotions and keeping his distance in personal relationships. Tiffany, on the other hand, was a young, carefree girl who simply enjoyed spending time with a new and exciting friend like Omar. Uh, 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 but it was the difference in age and life experience that created a special attraction between them. Omar was attracted to Tiffany's freshness and innocence, while Tiffany felt safe and mature in Omar's presence. Long conversations on the beach gradually turned into more private dates. They took moonlit walks together and enjoyed romantic dinners and shared their deepest feelings. Mm, gradually, um, the relationship grew beyond friendship and they began to develop real feelings for each other. However, as their relationship deepened, Omar began to show signs of anxiety and worry that Tiffany did not immediately recognize. Although he always showed love and care for Tiffany, deep down, Omar felt a certain insecurity. He was uncertain about the future of the relationship, and, even more so, whether he was ready to enter into a new marriage at the age of 50, especially with a young woman like Tiffany. Things got more complicated when Tiffany found out she was pregnant. It was a huge shock for both of them. Tiffany, despite loving Omar, couldn't help but feel confused and anxious about the future. She didn't know if she was ready to be a mother at 20, and if Omar really wanted to start a family with her. Tiffany kept it a secret for a few days, thinking about the best way to tell Omar. When Tiffany finally decided to share the news with Omar, she did so honestly and openly. They were having dinner at a fancy restaurant and Tiffany couldn't hide it any longer. She looked straight into Omar's eyes and told him that she was pregnant. Omar's response was a long silence with a puzzled look on his face. Despite trying to stay calm, Omar couldn't hide the anxiety and tension in his mind. He knew that Tiffany's pregnancy would completely change both of their lives, and that made him feel more insecure than ever. Although Omar knew in his heart that getting married was the logical and right solution, he couldn't help but feel that things were moving too fast. He loved Tiffany, but he was not sure if this love was strong enough to overcome the challenges and responsibilities they would face in the future. Tiffany, while sensing Omar's anxiety, thought that it was just a natural reaction to the unexpected news. She reassures him that they will get through anything together and that their love will be a strong foundation for a happy family. She tries to convince Omar that everything will be okay, that they will be great parents, and that this is an opportunity for them to start a new life together. Although he did not want to disappoint Tiffany, Omar could not fully accept the situation with the confidence and enthusiasm she expected. He agreed to marry her, but there was always a vague anxiety in his heart. 
Omar's expressions, the distant looks, the thoughtful moments, showed that he was struggling with himself, torn between fulfilling his responsibilities and nameless fears about the future. Omar Lewis and Tiffany Carter's marriage began after several months of dating, a relationship that surprised many people because of the age difference between them. As the wedding day approached, Tiffany's excitement and eagerness were in stark contrast to Omar's heavy and anxious mood. Even though Omar knew that marrying Tiffany was the right thing to do, especially after she became pregnant, he could not hide his inner unease. The wedding day took place at a luxurious seaside resort where the two first met. Tiffany appeared radiant in a pure white wedding dress, her beauty leaving everyone in awe. She smiled brightly, holding Omar's hand tightly as they walked into the ceremony. But those who knew Omar could tell something was off about him. From the start of the ceremony, Omar had been acting strangely, drawing attention. He kept adjusting his tie, looking around nervously, and at times seemed lost in his own thoughts. Whenever someone approached him to congratulate him, he would only respond with forced, unnatural smiles. Those close to Omar were puzzled by this behavior, but they kept quiet, assuming it was just normal pre-wedding nervous. As he stood before the priest to take his vows, Omar's anxiety became more evident. His hands shook, his voice was uncertain as he repeated his vows, and his eyes occasionally darted to the audience as if searching for an escape or reassurance. But there was none, and he knew he had no choice but to complete the ceremony. Tiffany, happy as she was, couldn't help but notice the strangeness in Omar's behavior. She squeezed his hand, trying to offer comfort and encouragement, but her efforts only seemed to make Omar more nervous. She didn't understand why Omar was acting like this, but she told herself that everything would be fine as they started their new life together. After the ceremony ended and the two exchanged their vows, Omar still couldn't hide his uneasiness. Even though everyone around was cheering and raising their glasses to celebrate their happiness, Omar just stood there with a blank look in his eyes and a forced smile. These unusual gestures not only made Tiffany worried, but also led many guests to start whispering. Perhaps deep down, Omar knew that he wasn't ready for this marriage. He felt pressured by social responsibility and Tiffany's pregnancy, which forced him to go ahead without any other choice. But that responsibility could not dispel his anxiety, and the wedding day, which should have been the happiest day of their lives, became a stressful one for Omar. When the ceremony ended and the guests left, Omar breathed a sigh of relief, but the anxiety still weighed heavily on his heart. He wondered if he could handle the responsibility, if marrying Tiffany would really bring happiness to both of them, or if it was just a hasty decision that he would have to pay for later. These questions kept swirling in his mind, dimming the joy of their wedding day. And so, in doubt about their future, after the wedding day, what seemed to be the beginning of a happy life quickly turned into a series of tense days between Tiffany and Omar. From the very first moments after the ceremony, when the door to the bridal chamber closed, the atmosphere between them was heavy and filled with anxiety. Things they had never said and emotions that had been suppressed during their dating and on their wedding day began to surface. After just one day of living together, small conflicts quickly arose. Tiffany, with her optimism and expectations for a sweet marriage, could not understand why Omar was acting cold and distant. She felt hurt when she realized that he was no longer as enthusiastic and caring as before. Meanwhile, Omar, with his unresolved worries and pressures, felt weighed down by the responsibilities of marriage and the expectations Tiffany placed on him. The argument started from small things, a wrong word, an unfriendly look, or simply a long silence between the two. The differences in life views gradually revealed themselves. Tiffany wanted a cozy family life where she could fulfill the role of a wife and soon become a mother. She expected Omar to share with her plans and dreams for the future. But Omar, with his unstable mentality, could not meet those expectations. He felt that the marriage had come too quickly, too suddenly, without giving him time to really prepare mentally. 
The first heated argument occurred when Omar, in a moment of indecision, expressed his worries and feelings of unease. Tiffany, already in a fragile state due to the rapid changes in her life, reacted strongly. She felt betrayed and distrustful when she realized that Omar did not fully share his true thoughts with her. The tension between them grew, and each conversation seemed to only make things worse. Just three days into their marriage, Omar Lewis found himself trapped in a web he was not prepared for. His relationship with Tiffany, which had initially been an attraction, had now become a burden he could not escape. With each passing day, the stress and pressure of his new marriage only made Omar feel more suffocated. Once a successful confident man, he was now faced with nameless fears, and dark thoughts began to invade his mind. Omar realized that if he wanted to escape this situation, if he wanted to return to his previous peaceful life, he had to do something extreme. The thought of getting rid of Tiffany was just a flash in his mind, but it quickly turned into a clear plan. He knew that if he didn't do this, his life would be forever tied to a marriage he never truly wanted. Omar's plan began with finding a way for Tiffany to die without raising any suspicion. He knew that she had no history of heart disease or any other serious health problems, so her death had to look like an unforeseen accident. Omar began researching drugs and substances that could cause a fake heart attack without leaving any obvious traces. He even considered how to ensure that when she died, it would be considered an accident or a natural event, so that no one would suspect him. After days of deliberation, Omar decided to use an embolic drug, a substance that, if administered in the right dosage, could cause a fake heart attack in a healthy person without leaving any obvious traces. He had prepared himself thoroughly, considered every possibility, and found a way to approach Tiffany without raising her suspicions. Throughout this process, Omar maintained a calm facade, continued his daily life, even trying to show more care and concern for Tiffany than usual so that no one would suspect that he was planning such a terrible thing. That fateful night, Omar and Tiffany had a normal conversation before going to bed. Tiffany, although still feeling that something was wrong with their relationship, could not have imagined that the husband she trusted was plotting to harm her. After Tiffany fell asleep, Omar began to carry out his plan. He gently dissolved the poison in a glass of water placed by Tiffany's bed. When she woke up in the night and drank the water as usual, the poison began to seep into her body. When Tiffany began to show the first symptoms, Omar remained still, pretending to be unaware. He heard her labored breathing, felt her body convulsing, but he remained calm. He knew that if everything went according to plan, she would take her last breath without anyone being able to detect the real cause. And as expected, within minutes, Tiffany stopped breathing. The next morning, when Omar woke up, he found Tiffany lying motionless beside him. When Omar Lewis was sure that Tiffany had stopped breathing, he sat silently for a moment, trying to calm himself before taking the next step in his plan. With trembling hands, he picked up the phone and called the police. His voice was filled with carefully prepared panic. She's not breathing. My wife Tiffany, she's not breathing. Omar tried to keep his voice natural as if he was really facing a terrible shock. Please come immediately. Immediately after receiving the call from Omar Lewis, the police quickly arrived at the scene the house where Tiffany Carter had suddenly passed away. When they entered the house, the cold and heavy air seemed to envelop them, reflecting the deathly silence that had not existed just a few hours ago. Omar, posing as a panicked and grieving husband, tried to explain his wife's sudden death, but his suspiciously calm demeanor made some of the police officers feel that something was amiss. The police began a preliminary investigation at the scene. Initially, they found no obvious signs of outside interference. There were no traces of forced entry, no signs that Tiffany had suffered any physical assault. However, a few small, seemingly innocuous details began to catch the attention of investigators. These details, like scattered pieces of the puzzle, gradually formed a more complex picture. When the medical examiner performed an autopsy, they found a small amount of a foreign substance in Tiffany's body. Although not enough to be immediately conclusive, 
This created an initial suspicion that there might have been outside interference. They decided to expand the scope of the investigation, including a thorough search of the entire house and interviews with those involved. However, no clear results emerged in the first days. Throughout the investigation, the police noticed small details in Omar's behavior. Although he appeared distressed, there were moments when his composure became unusual, as if he was trying to hide something. The police decided to investigate Omar further, and what they discovered began to open up a new direction for the investigation. One of the first things the police discovered was that Omar had recently purchased a large amount of sleeping pills. Initially, this was easy to ignore, but when investigators connected it to the strange substance found in Tiffany's body, they began to suspect that sleeping pills may have been used as part of the murder plan. Omar did not have a reasonable explanation for purchasing such a large amount of sleeping pills, which only added to this suspicion. Investigators continued to dig deeper into Omar's behavior in the weeks leading up to Tiffany's death. They discovered that Omar had contacted an unknown source to purchase some illegal substances, which they later determined to be an embolic agent, a substance that can cause a fake heart attack. It all began to become clear. Omar had tried to stage Tiffany's death as a natural heart attack, but his strange and careless actions revealed the truth. Once enough evidence had been collected, the police decided to question Omar in more detail. Initially, Omar continued to insist that Tiffany's death was an accident and that he had nothing to do with it. However, under the pressure of the interrogation and the increasingly clear evidence, Omar began to lose his composure. The previous fake calmness disappeared, replaced by obvious tension and anxiety. Finally, faced with overwhelming evidence, Omar was forced to admit part of the truth. He said he had bought sleeping pills to help Tiffany relax, but denied using drugs. However, his testimony was not enough to convince the police. With evidence of the drug purchase and the connection between the events, the police had enough evidence to conclude that Omar had planned and carried out the murder. The day the police arrived at Omar's home to arrest him, the stress and fear were evident on his face. Facing murder charges, Omar knew it was all over. The home that had been the start of a marriage just days earlier had become the scene of a brutal crime. The truth about Tiffany's death was finally coming to light, but it did little to lessen the pain and loss felt by everyone. The trial of Omar Lewis in late 2008 drew widespread public attention. Once a wealthy, successful man, Omar was now facing justice, forced to pay for the crimes he had committed. The courtroom was tense from the very beginning of the trial as the prosecutor began presenting the evidence against him. The prosecutor skillfully built a case by presenting compelling evidence that Omar had meticulously planned the murder of Tiffany Carter. Evidence included receipts for large quantities of sleeping pills, autopsy results showing the presence of poison in Tiffany's body, and even Omar's unusual phone calls and financial transactions in the days leading up to Tiffany's death. The prosecutor pieced together the evidence, painting a picture of a cold, premeditated murder. Omar initially maintained that Tiffany's death was an unfortunate accident. He repeatedly insisted that he had no intention of harming his wife and that he had bought her sleeping pills to help her relax from the stresses of life. Omar's defense attorney also attempted to cast doubt on the veracity of the evidence, arguing that it was not strong enough to convict Omar of murder. The prosecutors, however, did not leave any stone unturned. They continued to present more compelling evidence, including testimony from people who knew about Omar's strange relationship with Tiffany, as well as Omar's unusual behavior before and after Tiffany's death. The pressure of the irrefutable evidence began to weigh on Omar. As the trial progressed into its final stages, the psychological pressure grew, and Omar began to show signs of weakness. Finally, under the weight of the facts and the convincing evidence, Omar could no longer deny it. He admitted that Tiffany's death was not an accident, but the result of a carefully prepared plan. Omar's admission of guilt brought the entire courtroom to a tense silence. Those watching the trial both inside and outside the courtroom were shocked by this cruel truth. Omar, once a symbol of success, 
was now a criminal exposed by his own ambitions and fears. At the end of the trial, the judge had no choice but to sentence Omar Lewis to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The decision was not only a punishment for his murder, but also a warning about the consequences of letting greed and selfishness rule your life. As the trial ended, Omar left the courtroom quietly, facing the rest of his life in prison, where he would have to live with the guilt of his actions.